Hey guys, so on the bench today we have making our own Neptune Systems Aquabus cables. Now all these are are USB uh, cables, but they're passive USB cables. They can't be active, meaning they can't have a repeater someplace that draws power and amplifies uh, the signal. So usually what I recommend people do is they just take their uh, USB, well Aquabus is an Aquabus cable, and they plug it into a passive uh, USB cable. And these come in up to lengths of 25 feet, and that's what I have here. So if we need Aquabus cables longer than 25 feet, we can make them out of Cat5 cables and uh, male USB to terminal uh, adapters, which you can buy off eBay. So all you'll need for this is a razor blade, a uh, a uh, set of uh, wire snips and strippers are helpful but not uh, necessary and a length of CAT5 cable. I'm actually going to be using uh, CAT6 cable because the wires are slightly thicker and they're better insulated. And I had a long length of it lying around to show you guys with. So if you open up any CAT5 cable you're going to see four pairs of wires. Green and white, orange and white, brown and white, and blue and white. And it's the same on our Cat5 cable as well. Uh, they're slightly different colors, but basically the same. So our first step is to take our Cat5 or Cat6 cable and we're going to slice back the length of the plastic shielding. And then peel that back to reveal the four pairs of wires and the CAT6 at least will have an inner uh, piece of plastic that helps hold the cable together and make it stronger so we're just going to cut that off and then we're going to untwist each pair of wires. Alright, so once we've untwisted the wires, we have eight individual wires, and we only have uh, five ports on our USB, so we need to trim three of them back. Alright, so I've chosen three of these wires to get rid of, and I just randomly chose the green and white, the blue and white, and the white and brown. So let's clip those off. And then we need to strip back the remaining five wires. All right, so now I have the wires stripped back and I'm just going to insert them into the terminals of this uh, adapter and then screw the terminals down. All right, so I've inserted all the wires and I've screwed them all down. Now we just need to repeat this step with the other side. Alright, when we repeat it with the other side, we just need to make sure uh, that we keep the cables in the same order. This is the very important part. So, uh, from left to right, I have blue, then brown, then orange, then orange and white, and green. So now I have the same order over here as well. Alright, so now I'm just going to do a quick continuity test just to make sure that the wires are connected properly and that I haven't uh, gotten anything backwards. So just touch each terminal. And make sure that everything's connected properly. Alright, so now that we've done that, uh, our cable is done. So with our cable completed, the only thing left to do is show you guys uh, that this works. So I am going to uh, go plug this extension cable into my apex. So I plug the other end into my apex. Uh, I'm going to plug the female end into this cable and the other end. Uh, the only spare module I have lying around is the Lunar Sims module. Plug that in. 
and will you be able to see it? There is a green light as a status. And if I go into uh, my Apex, I can uh, access this. So we've got 150 feet of cable here probably. Uh, so uh, it works for at least that distance and uh, theoretically it should work for a lot longer. Now if you are going to use uh, a very long uh, length, I do recommend uh, the CAT6 cable uh, just because the, uh, the shielding is better and uh, it'll be able to transmit the power uh, that is uh, within these Aquabus cables a lot better. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you have any comments, uh, questions, or suggestions for DIY ideas, then put them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, guys.